All right, week four in the NFL, weeks two and three, not the greatest for me. Haven't gone through and done the exact uh, count yet, but I will get my numbers out there and I'll, I will post them week five or six. I'll try to post my season record so far for all you guys as well. Thursday night or Denver at New York, Denver one point road favorites. At least Denver's been competitive in all their games. The Jets, they've been blowing out in every game. Both starting tackles, top three wide receivers, starting running back, cornerback, all out for the Jets. Uh, two pick sixes last week against the Colts. Only averaged 12.3 games on offense. Just atrocious numbers across the board for New York. Adam Gase, he, under Adam Gase, the Jets have lost by double digits in 11 of 19 games. That's just unbelievable to me. There's no way I'm not picking Denver in this one. New York Jets, I think they're the worst team in the NFL this year, hands down. I am absolutely freezing in here today in my room. I really need to switch the heat on now. It's starting to get cold. Next game, Arizona at Carolina. Arizona three-point road favorites. I see this game as a push myself. Murray, three INTs last week, averaged 25.7 points per game due to the cards. Home team is 6-1 and one against the spread versus each other. The fave is 5-2 and two versus each other against the spread. Carolina, they average 22.7 points per game and give up 27 a game. They're 1-6-1 one, one against the spread in their last eight. I like Arizona to win this game, but I think it's going to be a little closer like I said at the start, I like the push on this. Arizona by a field goal seems right to me. Baltimore on the road at the Washington football team. The Ravens are 13-point favorites coming off that loss, what, 34-20 to to the Chiefs on Monday night. Disappointing in my eyes. Not really because I, fa I like the Ravens better than the Chiefs. I don't. I like them two teams both pretty much the same. They're both enjoyable to me. But it was rather disappointing that the lack of offense Baltimore was able to achieve against Kansas City. But anyways, I think they get back on track against Washington. Uh, Baltimore 5-0 against the spread as road faves. 11-4 against the spread their last 15 games. Constantly blow up bad teams. That is who they're facing here in this series head-to-head. -head. The favorite is 4-1 against the spread and versus each other straight up. Washington, 1-5 against the spread in their last six. 3-7 against the spread as home underdogs. I like Baltimore to get back on track and roll Washington by at least two touchdowns. So I like them to cover that big spread as well. Next, Cleveland, plus 4.5 point road underdogs in Dallas. Dallas, 4.5 point Home favorites off to a bad start. That Dallas D just looks atrocious. Crescon in the offense just looks incredible. Don't know what to make of Dallas. Cleveland are 0-7 against the spread on the road. Dallas is 0-3 this year to start the year against the spread. They're 1-2 record tied with Washington for the lead in the NFC lease. With Philly and the Giants both 0-3. I don't think this is a good week for the NFC East. I do like Dallas, however, to get the win, but I like Cleveland to cover the spread in this one and that game to be a little close. I just don't think Cleveland has enough offense to quite keep up with Dallas's offensive explosiveness. Next, we have Indy on the road to face Chicago. The Bears are two and a half point home underdogs. The Colts and Bears are three and three straight up and against the spread versus each other. Indy is 4-1 against the spread in October, 2-6 against the spread as road favorites, 0-3-1 against the spread on grass, 0-5 against the spread in week 4. Uh, the favorite is 4-1 against the spread head-to-head -head in this series. The Bears, Foles will be the QB. He led them to that comeback win. The Chicago is 4-11 against the spread, however, and 11-3-1 against the spread as a home underdog. I like the Bears in this game to win and obviously cover as they are the underdog. Next, we have Jacksonville in Cincinnati. The Bengals coming off that overtime tie with Philadelphia. Bengals, three-point home favorites. Both teams' QB should have a great game in this one as both secondaries are pretty weak. I put more of that on Philly's inept offense 
and play calling and lack of QB accuracy more than the Bengals having a good secondary in that one for that tie result. Uh, four and one against the spread as an underdog. Three one and one against the spread in Cincinnati are the Jags. The favorite is three and one and one against the spread. The road team is three one and one against the spread head to head. I am going to take Cincinnati to win this game, but I like it as a push, as a field goal, a field goal at the end to win it for the Bengals. I think it's finally they will get their first win of the year. The Chargers are in Tampa Bay to face Brady and the Bucks. The Bucks are seven-point home favorites. They're four-one and one against the spread as a favorite. The Chargers eleven-four and two against the spread on the road. One-five-one against the spread in their last seven games. However, offense, defense, passing, and rushing all top ten for the Chargers. I don't see how they can beat Tampa Bay, but I don't think Tampa Bay blows them out. I pick Tampa Bay to win the game and the Chargers to cover the seven-point spread. New Orleans on the road in Detroit. New Orleans, a very disappointing start to the season, although they have had a tough start to the year matchup-wise. The Saints are four-point favorites on the road in Detroit. Uh, New Orleans, their biggest thing is their penalties. They have been penalized 24 times for 331 yards. Most of them have come on defensive pass interference calls. So that'll be a key in this game. Will Stafford be able to air it out and get them calls, if not completions deep downfield? That could really, really swing this game to be a lot tighter or lot in favor of the Lions instead of the Saints, like most people would assume. I'd like uh, New Orleans 11-4 against spread, 12-2 against spread in week four, 6-2 against spread versus Detroit. Both teams are allowing 30 points per game to their opponents. Detroit snapped an 11-game losing streak. They are 7-3 against the spread at home. First teams with losing records. The Saints, I don't know if that really applies here in this situation. Detroit is also 3-8 against the spread as an underdog. I think New Orleans gets right here this week. I think they win and cover the four-point spread. On to Seattle at Miami. Seattle is six and a half point road favorites. Wilson, 14 TD passes in the first three games. Great run defense, Seattle. It's just amazing. They've held Gurley, Newton, and Zeke all under 56 yards rushing or on the ground so far in their first three games. They are 12-4-1 against the spread on the road, 10-4-1 against the spread on grass, 5-1-1 against the spread as a favorite. The underdog is 4-0 against the spread in the head-to-head -head matchup. Road team is 4-1 against the spread in the head-to-head -head matchup. Miami is 6-1 against the spread versus Seattle. I like Seattle to win this one and win this one by a lot. I would be surprised if this game was closer than 17 points. I like Seattle on both the win and the cover there. The Giants, 12 and a half point road underdogs in LA to face the Rams. Uh, the Rams down 28-3, took the lead and then lost with less than 20 seconds to the Bills. Josh Allen did most of the work there. Uh, Goff and the offense have been cruising this year so far. The Giants, Jones has a passer rating of 50. Not good at all. They scored zero TDs on offense last week. I don't see how they get right in this. The favorite is 5-1 against spread. Uh, the road team is 4-1 against the spread, however. I like the Rams to win this game, but I do like the Giants to cover that 12.5 points. I don't care about the injuries. I don't think they're going to get blown out by two touchdowns here or 13 points. I see this more in the 7-10 to 10 point range. I like the Rams to win, the Giants to cover the spread. Next, Buffalo in Las Vegas to face the Raiders. The Bills, three-point road favorites. 3-0 and start so far this year for Buffalo. Having trouble holding leads, however, like I just mentioned in the game before, how the Rams came back on them, then Josh Allen came back and won. Allen, speaking of him, he's through for over 1,000 passing yards, 10 TDs to one interception so far this year. Uh, the Bills are averaging 31 points per game. Allen also has a 71.1% completion percentage, uh, 84 rushing yards and two TDs to go along with them passing numbers 
does Josh Allen. Diggs, 20 receptions for 288 yards and two TDs already. The way he's opened up that offense for Buffalo, he frees up them holes. He draws that extra defender, or at least defenders keeping an eye on him, which allows players like Singletary and Josh Allen to get free, free holes to run through. One less guy to worry about tackling them or boxing them in or cutting off a lane or whatever the case may be. It's really, really improved the Bills team. The Raiders, they had three fumbles lost last week. Josh Jacobs, if the Bills need to contain him, if Josh Jacobs doesn't have a big game, it feels like the Raiders aren't going to have a big game. I like the Bills to win and cover the three-point spread in this one. New England Patriots, a touchdown underdog in Kansas City. Kansas City rolled Baltimore last week. Baltimore couldn't answer on offense. Patrick Mahomes continues to roll. New England has won 5-1 against the spread in their last seven games. The road team is 4-0 against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup, however, but Kansas City is 7-0-1 against spread at home. 12-3-1 against the spread in their last 16. 6-0-1 against the spread as a home favorite. I don't see how Cam Newton and the Patriots can keep this one close, although it wouldn't surprise me if they sort of got a backdoor touchdown to cover. I am picking Kansas City to win the game and cover the spread, however. But don't be surprised for a backdoor cover in that one. Next, the disappointing shithole Philadelphia Eagles this year. Seven point underdogs on the road in San Francisco with 49ers and all their fucking injuries, including their quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, who's still questionable. This is Wednesday when I'm shooting this, so I don't know what his status will be. In this game, I don't have to say much. Wentz has lowest QBR of starting QB so far this year. 0-4 against the spread versus teams with winning records. Philly is 4-1 against spread in San Fran. The Fave is 6-2 against spread in this series. Philly is 6-2 against the spread versus San Fran. Wentz, 6 INTs to 3 TTs. Touchdowns on the season so far. The 49ers are 5-2 against spread in their last 7. Second ranked pass defense, but injuries, injuries, injuries for the 49ers. I still think they're good enough to win this game against Philadelphia, but Philadelphia, they should not be blowing out. Uh, I'm going to pick the Eagles to cover the touchdown spread, but the 49ers to get the win and keep the Eagles winless on the year. Next, Atlanta at Green Bay. Green Bay is seven point home favorites. They are five and one against spread as a home favorite. The Falcons, wow. How many 16 plus fourth quarter or second half leads do you have to blow? I just cannot support you for anything except for covers and big spreads because I am sure as fuck not picking you to win any games with what I've seen so far this year, dating back to when you blew that lead against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Uh, the Falcons are 5 1 against spread in Green Bay. Road team is 9 4 against spread verse. Atlanta is 5 0 against spread as road underdog, 4 0 against spread on grass. I am definitely picking Green Bay to win this game, but Atlanta, they've shown me enough on offense, and they can get them points on the board quickly, that I will take them to cover the seven-point spread, but still lose the game once again. Next, Pittsburgh at Tennessee. This game has been postponed due to a positive COVID test. They're testing the players further to make sure that there is no players that are infected. I can't remember what the report was, who it was that was infected, so I don't want to say the wrong person or people or whoever the case may be. I'm hearing this game will be postponed, pushed back till Monday or Tuesday possibly. Could have Tuesday night football this week. Uh, Tennessee, 0-3 against spread. Bad defense tends to keep let teams stay close to them because they do have a good enough offense. But their strength is their running game, which goes up against Pittsburgh, and the Steelers have the number one run defense. Something's got to give here. I think this game is close. I think if it's anything more than a three-point, I like Tennessee to win this game by a field goal or less. So anything more than a field goal in Tennessee's favor, I would pick Pittsburgh for sure in that game, but Tennessee to win it. Uh, Minnesota, Houston, this one I have no line for as of yet. Two struggling 0-3 teams. I'm not sure what's going up with what's up with that game, but at least Houston has had maybe the toughest schedule to start the year. They face Kansas City, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh. That's a pretty rough start. I think they have enough talent or a bit more talent 
than Minnesota to get the job done. So I once again, I like this one. I like Houston by four points max. If the spread goes over four, I would definitely be on Minnesota. But anything four or less in Houston to win the game, I would take the Texans. And that's all my picks for week four. Peace.